So I'm sure that sometimes, for example, you want to increment a score and when the score is actually incremented, you want to update a label or when the player takes some damage, you want to update its corresponding health bar. These are things that we are always doing as developers and well, there are of course uh, a lot of efficient ways of getting this done but what essentially we're doing here is if the health of the player has been modified which would be a variable then do something in the score is the same thing if the score variable has been modified then update the label so even though this can be done quite simply it can even be done more uh, simpler and more efficiently that's why in today's video we're going to be discussing setters and getters which by the way, it isn't a topic that I've seen a lot in other videos or even in the Goda documentation itself and I don't really know when they were first introduced. I don't know, for some reason they are they are a topic that for some reason they, they, they seem to be like quite hidden and they are actually quite useful. So I will show you first two examples in which we are using these properties or setters and getters so as you can see, I basically have a button and I increase the score, that's all. And when I increase the score, I update the label. So this is actually handled by just one script. And this is where we see this setter in this case. So first of all, uh, we create an unready variable that uh, stores the corresponding score label, basically this one. And then we have the corresponding score variable that we would normally have. So for example, what we would do is, okay, uh, when we increase the score directly below here, okay, uh, we update the label. And of course that would be all right, but in more complex scenarios um, where maybe our code is longer or our logic is more complicated than just increasing one of score in a pretty simple UI, uh, maybe it is difficult to actually get access to exactly the moment in which the score has been modified and then when this happens we have to update the text. Because a solution that maybe you have seen that it's not a good practice is to basically handle the changing of this text or, or any properties such as the health bar progress. It's basically doing this in the process. As process is being called at every frame, we can just update here all the time the score label text. But this is not pretty good because we are all the time updating the score label text even though it hasn't been modified. So it's basically wasting resources. So basically, to simplify the code in more complex situations, uh, this is the, the perfect place in which a setter and a getter can actually help a lot. And as you can see, the syntax is quite simple. We have the normal variable, okay, and you, you can static type it if you want. It is not really needed, but well, maybe you, you do use a static typing because it does provide a lot of advantages. And this is where we then declare the setter. And the setter, as we are setting, a new score in this case it always requires us to provide a parameter and this is usually named new underscore and then the actual variable name new underscore uh, underscore score okay so for example if i have over here a new variable i don't know health and this will be a float i could call it here new health okay i will actually receive here an error but whatever i, I believe that you understand how how you should name your your setter arguments and basically what this is going to be doing is like let's say create a function that is going to be called whenever a new value has been set to the score uh, so in this case we are updating our score to match our new score this is something that if you have seen uh, setters in in other situations or that you actually want to use setters in your own project you are going to in mostly i believe all cases or in a lot of them just going to be doing this update the current variable with the new variable and something for you not to get messed up with. Uh, at first, I thought that this new score would just be this one that I am incrementing over here, but that's not the case. The new score is actually like that. Basically, new score will not be equal to one, but it will be equal to score plus equal one. So it is indeed like the new updated score, but not the value that has been increased to it. So basically, after updating the score, we are just setting the corresponding score label text as simple as that and I, as I have also mentioned you also have the getter okay but the, the, the getter method okay is basically going to be the same thing with the setter but instead when its value it's being get 
So for example, I will print over here a uh, score got, okay? And then over here, sorry, we have to actually call here the ready function. For example, and I will just print the score. So I am getting the value. When you get a value, it means that you are reading it, that you are not necessarily modifying it. And then also over here, when we are getting this value, we must also return the value, okay? That is basically what is happening like in the background. If you have one variable and here I want to print it, I am basically getting it. So in the background, Godot is actually returning the value of this variable. So in this case, what we're going to be seeing is that the, the default score is being printed, which would be zero. And then as I am also getting it, I would also get this, uh, this score got statement. So here we have it, score got and then zero. Now, in some cases, you may see that if they don't want uh, to put any behavior in the get method, that in, in a lot of cases, I don't think that you're going to be using actually a get method because when you want to get a variable, that's the only thing that you want. You don't want to execute extra code. But well, some people do type it like this with a return, but it is not actually necessary because if you don't put anything else, Godot will automatically uh, return the value. So if we do it like this, it will work in the exact same way. We are returning the value of score. So those are the, the most important things about this. And also I created here a, a second example with the health bar. So here a damage is always being done, okay, randomly. So here what is happening that we have a player health, okay. And here I also show you a second way of doing this. Instead of everything in the same line, uh, you can also just connect different functions. So set, set player health. Once again, take a look at the naming convention, set, and then the variable name, set underscore and the, and the variable name. This receives a new player health, which is going to be a float. I believe that you can also hear this new score static type it as an integer and that would still work if you really wanted. Um, but well, no, you can't, I believe. So let's, let's play safe. And here what I'm doing is quite simple. I am once again updating the corresponding player health with a new player health. Here, for sure, the best way of doing this would be uh, with a clamp, okay? Instead of doing this, but well, I'm not going to get into clamping in this, in this video, but well, I just want to make sure that my player health is never less than zero. Uh, and basically then I just update the player health bar value, okay? So that I update like the graphic. And for the get, once again, the only thing that I do is to return the value. Once again, if you don't want to do any extra steps in the get, don't write anything at all. It is not necessary. And then basically when the deal damage button is pressed, I just do a random damage that I set over here. So well, with this, as you can see, the code has been a little bit like simplified or made it cleaner. And this can really help when you have like longer scripts and longer actions. Um, or even when you have more complex behaviors than just modifying a variable when a button is being pressed. That's the actual magic of setters and getters, okay? If you are serious about leveling up your Godot skills, check out my course. In less than 6 hours, you'll master Godot fundamentals while building this amazing project. Links in the description. See you there.